Stanislaw with Motion VFX, and this tutorial is all about creating different kinds of looks using M Film Look. We're going to be creating a few different looks from scratch and modifying one of the presets with making some changes and saving it. Before I get started, I always like to set up my screen to work a little bit better. So I'm going to close my library, I'm going to open up my inspector, and I'm going to come down to my effects where I've already have M Film Look and a bunch of the presets queued up. Something that makes M Film look really fast is if you hover over any of the presets and you scrub through them, it'll actually display that before you even apply anything. Since we're starting from scratch, I'm going to just drag a fresh copy and place it onto my clip. I've got all my effect controls right here on the left, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show that in my inspector. If you shot in some sort of log footage, be sure to convert it to 709 first. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and start white balancing this, and I'm going to manually pull this into the blue, which will warm up my scene a little bit. Because I'm going to be continuing this warm kind of look, I'm going to jump into my levels and really brighten it up and bump up that contrast a bit. My levels are only going to get me so far, so I'm going to use the basic adjustments and adjust my color temperature and push that pretty high up. And I want to pull down my saturation just a little bit to match the original shot a little bit more. I'm not going to put a flare in this particular look, but I'll move down to my LUTs and I'm going to choose between some different LUTs and I have one in mind here called Ardor. I'm going to place. Typically whenever I place LUTs on here, they're always a little too strong, so I'm going to pull this back, but I really like this one here because it's added a lot of brown into this hair, which seems a little bit more natural. I'm going to skip over the rest of these and just put in a very light vignette. I'm really dialing this back because I'm going for a bit of a subtle look to this. Next, I'll come down to my letterbox. I'm going to enable that and pick Panavision, but that's cut off part of my actress here. So I'll use the position offset to bring them back into frame. I've made a lot of changes very quickly, so I'm going to come up to the top and just turn on and turn off my M film look so I can see the difference. And I think I'm going to warm this up quite a bit more and then save this as a preset. I'm going to create a new category, name it looks, and I'm going to name this warm look just so I know what it is. And I can view that back in here in that same category. Before we go into the next example, there's something I want to talk about, and that's when people use adjustment layers for coloring. So if you don't know what an adjustment layer is, it's basically an empty title that you can use to place effects on for everything underneath it. Problem is, whenever you're coloring your footage, and you're placing an effect on the adjustment layer, that's only going to work across everything that's there. So it might work for one or two shots. When you're coloring something, you really need to go through shot by shot and make these changes so it looks a little bit more cohesive. If I change this here, that's going to change every other shot that that adjustment layer is on. So if I do use these, I'll use it for my final grade. Let's create another example using very cool tones. So I'm going to drag a fresh copy of M film look on here, and I'm just going to move this over to the right side for me. Using my eyedropper, I can white balance into this, but again, I'm going to pull this into the yellows and that's going to create a lot more cooler tones. I'll move into the levels and I'm going to really drop the exposure and pull down the contrast a bit and overall just make this a lot darker compared to our last example that we had. And what I tend to do is I'll use the white balance and the color temperature to really set my color in case I don't want to just throw a LUT at it right away. I'll add an on-screen flare to this using the flare presets and I don't want to necessarily go with this one, but I like the way that this one looks. It's a little bit more subtle on the side. And I'll pull down the intensity and what I want to make sure I do is change this from automatic to manual, otherwise it will drift as it's animating through the clip. While I feel like this is pretty cool, I'm going to go ahead and put a LUT on here too that is just going to brighten up some of the teals in the background. And I'm just going to pull that back a little bit more and check out my before and after. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of aberration and I actually really like the aberration effect. And I'm going to make this a bit softer through here. And then we'll go ahead and add just a little bit of barrel distortion as well. I tend to use a lot of the lens blur effect and the reason why I do that is it kind of lets me focus on a specific area without being a little heavy handed. 
I can go really far with this and we can blur out the entire background, but that doesn't look too natural. And I just want to focus on our actress here and kind of soften things up. Now I run into a situation when we go ahead and play this back. I really want to keep this person in focus so I can animate my mask settings by creating keyframes, dragging this over, and then playing this back, you'll see that now my mask follows it. Because I've made this one a bit darker, I want to add some grain to this. What I like about this grain is if I change the size, you can see what's happening and it makes it really natural looking, but I will slow it down so it matches our footage a bit more. With our vignette, it's really easy to go way too far with this. Again, I like to be a bit more subtle with it and I'll tend to pull it back quite a bit. I'm going to skip our letterbox for right now and just use this as our preset since we want to create something that's totally different. And I'll make this a cool dark one. Earlier I mentioned how important it is to kind of match your shot to shot. Well, something that you may not be aware of is Final Cut has a comparison viewer. What the comparison viewer does is it will show you the next or the previous edit and you can also save frames. And this is going to make it a lot easier to compare your different colors to back and forth. So for example here, I place the same effect on here and I need to adjust where my blur is and I'm going to continue to adjust this so you can see how important this can be trying to match these two shots visually without a comparison. In our third example, let's start with one of the presets that's included with M Film Look and make some adjustments. So I'm going to turn off this flare right away and I'm going to go into the levels and I want to talk about this auto levels. If you've never used the scopes, turn on your scopes and click in the auto levels, you can see what happens. Is it wants to take it to the top and the bottom of our waveform. And this is a great way to kind of dial in to see how bright and how dark or how contrasted you can make something. Something to be aware of is if you use the white balance here, it will use the original values, which is why you'll see your scope change. And you can see those changes happen and close my scopes. In the first example, we created something very warm. In the second example, we created something very cool. And in this third example, I wanted to create something very vibrant. So what I'm trying to do is just balance things up to make everything pop as much as possible. Out of the different tools that I've personally used, I really like M Film Look because of the way it's designed. All of these tools are set up in a way that you can just knock them out one at a time and use things if you need to use them like this blur. I want to really set our characters in focus and adding a little bit of a grain. That's a very natural progression of how I would be putting these effects together if it, they were in separate packages. Since we had started with a preset, there's already a vignette on there and I like the way that that's set up. So I'm going to keep this and then save this as its own unique preset, even though we've kind of started with another preset to begin with. So it's really great to use them as jumping off points and then creating something new and totally unique just for your style. So that's a way to create three different looks in M Film Look. My name is Stanislav from Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.